Hello, everyone. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. inspired me and my wife too well really everyone in church brother Victor from our church who became a missionary to reach the lost souls in Costa Rica and Central America so you know pray for him he was moved by the Holy Ghost to move there and led there to help the people So today our title is Without Jesus, You Are Lost. Me too. If I push Jesus to the side and don't have him in my life, I'm lost. There's a, a gentleman I was talking to on, on Marco Polo. We're discussing different things, and I decided to go ahead and make a short vlog about this. Oh, let's go back. We have to focus on Jesus. There is no other than Him. He's the only one that can save us. Hallelujah. Only Jesus was resurrected, and that will come back. We have to work it, focus on his word. So let's look at his, his name here. I will show a verse with this later. So next. I know several times we've signed this, but I want to emphasize that the person and I that we're talking about this, and I want to explain a little bit more. So Jesus is speaking here. Whatever he speaks is truth. He never confuses things. He never changes his mind. He never plays with his words. When he speaks, it's true. Okay, so go ahead and read. Okay. So Jesus is saying, I said, therefore, if you read the whole chapter 8, It'll connect all to this, but here he's trying to explain to the Jewish people that do not believe he is Messiah. And he's saying, I said therefore unto you that ye, meaning you, meaning you all, shall die in your sins. Yes, there's many, many, many different kinds of sin. No one's perfect. Without Jesus, we will die in our sin. Period. That's it. But thank God he can save us. And only he can do it. Again, there is no other. There's not a second savior. There's only God. And only he can save us. Okay, so now. For if ye believe not that I am he, 
and you see that, that color gray there. I know there's many different sizes for the color gray. It's gray because really in the KJV version, the King James version, you'll notice it's um, an italic typed font, meaning it's kind of slanted. And you'll kind of see, you know, like, why is that kind of, kind of slanted? That's for the addition and the proper English edition and the translation. So they've added the he there for, for understanding of what they're talking about. It says, I am he. We shall die in your sins. We don't want to die in our sins. We need remission. We need removal. We need to get it out, get rid of it, cleanse ourselves. We need forgiveness. We need to get it out of this and out of our lives. So, you know, I can't do that myself. So if I want to sit on my life, what do I do? We turn to him because he can. He can remove our sin for us. So how do you do that? What does it require? It requires his blood. There's not enough time to fully explain today, but some of you know. And that started many, 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 many years ago. All the way back to Adam and Eve. Eve did not obey God. She ate of the, the tree and she gave to her husband. And once that happened, once she ate of the tree, sin started. And since Adam and Eve told now, We've all been born in sin. Yes, God still loved Adam and Eve. And yes, God still loves us. And Adam, or God gave Adam instructions through his word. That they had to kill an animal for their blood sacrifice to cover their sin. They had to use the fur to cover their nakedness. And he became the, per the perfect sacrifice, the lamb of God to cover all of our sin. Because we cannot, we cannot do that nowadays. So he had made a plan to be able to die on Calvary for our sins. was passed down generation to generation. Moses done it, Abraham done it, David done it. Whoever has sin in their life had to make that blood sacrifice to push their sins forward. But now today, it's, it's different. Because he died on the cross for us and became that perfect sin. He knew that animal sacrifice was not enough. But 
that his blood on Calvary was enough to cover the cost of sin for all. The old sacrifices was a was a big process. They had to kill the sacrifice, then wash their hands before going into the temple. They had incense and they had to eat bread and they had, you know, to give the sacrifice to the priest in the holy place. Remember, focus only on his name. Go ahead and read. Yes, thank God for his blood. Let's look. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. So, when you repent, what do you do? You believe that Jesus died for your sins. Peter himself was there. They all seen what happened. They all know he resurrected. He himself was sacrificed, both Lord and Christ. And now Peter is preaching to this crowd, saying, you know, that he died and resurrected for your sins. If you believe that, repent. You can say, oh, just believe that this happened and you're good to go home. No, 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 there was more. It says, and be baptized, every one. Every one of you in the name of Jesus. If you believe this, that he is the I am, Mark, it says, if you believe not, you shall be damned. This is why it's important to repent and be baptized in his name. Hallelujah. So be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission. Again, you can't just believe that it happened. You actually have to take action afterwards. For the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I'm just again let you know I've experienced. My wife has experienced several times. I've experienced several times. We've seen people in church speaking in tongues. That's the proof that people are getting the Holy Ghost. Doesn't matter if you're deaf. You talk a different language. Anyone can get filled with his spirit. That's called the Holy Ghost. So you can be reconciled with Christ. God bless you. Love you.